in collaboration with the University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College, and the Ohio State University South Centers, we proudly present a series of different broadcast TV and radio shows that highlight different aspects of small businesses. Our co-hosts include Ryan Mapes, Endeavor Center Manager and Program Leader with the Ohio State University South Centers, Mike Thompson, Director of the Instructional Design and Media Services at the University of Rio Grande, and Brad Babs, Small Business Development Center Director with the Ohio State University South Centers. Small business owners and guests discuss information that is strictly business. Good afternoon and welcome to Strictly Business. Uh, I'm here with Ryan Mapes and another guest, which I'll introduce in just a second. This is the show about uh, business and how to help businesses uh, succeed. And today we're going to, uh, I guess, look at one business that is starting to thrive and getting on its feet and expanding. And Well, that's right, Mike. This, this business, the guest we have with us today is a, uh, is a client that we've worked with for the past several years through our SBDC, Small Business Development Center. And um, he's got a great story to tell, uh, kind of from start to finish, how he got his name, um, where he's at in the process right now, and how he's, you know, all the steps he's taken in between. He'll be able to share that information with us today, and hopefully someone will be able to take bits and pieces from that and learn. So, so did he use the incubator? No, it wasn't a, a partner in our incubator, in okay. our business incubator, but he did use the business development service, the small business development center services. Okay. Yeah. So we'd like to welcome Sam Peters uh, of Patterfam Sauces and the Pastor's Pantry Cooking School from Wheelersburg. Welcome, Sam. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ryan. Blessing to be here. Appreciate Good. it. So, uh, Sam, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I, um, I kind of got into cooking when I was 14 years old really wasn't that my mom uh, was a, a bad cook. She was a good cook, but she was not a great cook. <laughs> and uh, when other kids were going home watching cartoon shows and uh, other things, I was going home and watching Julia Child and the Galloping Gourmet and the Frugal Gourmet and Justin Wilson and Chef Prudhomme and, and uh, kind of honing my cooking chops even as a teenager. And so all through that time growing up as a, as a kid, I just really got into cooking and and what it meant to be a gourmet cook. Worked through high school in a restaurant, um, uh, with, uh, through college working in restaurants and kind of honed my uh, culinary skills there. But I've always been interested in food. And over the years, I was kind of the go-to person in our family to, to kind of make sauces and different dishes and things for the family. And uh, as that kind of went on, uh, came a time in 2009 that uh, my brother was having a birthday party. And, I asked him what I could make. He said, I'll oh, just make some kind of sauce. And he was having some chicken wings, and it was an island-themed birthday party. And uh, I created a, a Jamaican jerk sauce that uh, I took to the sauce, and I just put it out on a table uh, for everybody to try. And people went crazy over that stuff. And uh, with, literally within days, people were calling me at home, ordering the sauce, wanting to buy it. And uh, that was in May. And by October of 2009, we had our own sauce business. I, it literally exploded that fast. And um, as people were calling us, we, we were just putting in mason jars and trying to figure out really um, uh, how to market it and how to sell it. Without and, looking like moonshine. Well, exactly. <laughs> we didn't want to look like moonshine at all. And so uh, one of the things, uh, we said, well, we've got to come up with some kind of label and a name and, and all of that. Well, my nickname at home, uh, I'm a multivocational pastor. And uh, I had this little kid in my congregation who for a few years had couldn't say Pastor Sam, he called me Patter Fam. And so that was my nickname, and I answered to that. And so we just created a label and just called it Patter Fam Sauce and just stuck it on the jar. And uh, as that exploded, there's Reagan now. Uh, he's a great little kid. He's, uh, I just started fifth grade uh, yesterday, so he's a cool kid. But um, that's how Patter Fam got its name. And we just started putting it in mason jars. Well, by October, we were so inundated with orders that we needed to go find a co-packer and a company to make our sauces. And we eventually found a company in Dayton that could manufacture our sauces in small batches. And, and we, over time, ended up creating over 15 
uh, different flavors of sauce. Uh, just everything from sweet and mild all the way up to hot. Um, but let me shift real quickly to how I got associated with Ryan. About six months into the business, we, um, we went to a, uh, a little presentation that the Endeavor Center had for uh, new startup companies and we sat down and it was sort of like being on Shark Tank and my wife and I, we were so excited and we got our sauces all ready. We went in, we made our pitch about our company and um, that, that we met Ryan and several others at the Endeavor Center. And one of the things they told us was like, we don't think we can really help you. And my wife was just about <laughs> in tears. And I'm like, she's like, well, why? And they said, well, you're further ahead than most of the companies we sit down and deal with. But that started a partnership and an alliance with the Endeavor Centers that um, we have utilized extensively. And that's really helped us grow and gain education and insight about what it means to have a successful small business. So in the beginning, you said something about, uh, you know, things started taking off and people were requesting it. Uh, how did they know about it and what was the market that you were hitting initially? Well, the, the great thing was before we ever put our sauce out to the public, first it was just friends and family, word of mouth, phone calls, emails. But as we begin to go out there and think of this might be a product everyone would like because family will lie to you. Yeah. They'll tell you it tastes great even if it doesn't. Right. So we went around to every little festival and food show that we could find, and we asked anybody that was making any kind of a barbecue sauce or jelly, what was the smartest thing you ever did, and what was the dumbest thing you ever did. And we took notes. That's and good. And from that, that helped us probably avoid a lot of the pitfalls that new businesses probably encounter when they get started. So you started out with the Jamaican jerk sauce, right. and then it grew into... Uh, I, you mentioned you had 15 different lines. We have over 15 lines. flavors right now, yeah. So what are some of those flavors? I know we've got a few sitting in front of us <laughs> today. Well, yeah, our Jamaican jerk sauce is still by far our so most popular yeah, uh, flavor. True. Yeah, that, that, that sauce started the whole thing. Uh, it's won numerous Scovy Awards, um, Hot Pepper Awards, Festival uh, uh, Fiery Foods Awards, and I so on. I mean, you've been all around the country. All, all over the country, Albuquerque and Texas and New Orleans. And, you know, it's, it's been really great. Um, CNR, we've won over 50 national and international awards for our products. But it started out with the jerk sauce. And then from mm -hmm. that, we went into barbecue sauces. And we went into some other spice. I like things spicy, so I kind of got some spicy sauces uh, going on. We got into some wing sauces. Uh, our most recent wing sauce, which is uh, probably our most popular wing sauce right now, it was named, named the number one uh, boot jalokia sauce in the New Orleans Hot Sauce Show, is our Holy Ghost Revival. And it's just a, a ghost pepper wing sauce that's just packed with a lot of flavor and a good amount of heat. Uh, we have an Arribiata spicy marinara. We have, uh, you know, gosh, a very hot jelly, which is a spicy raspberry strawberry jelly. And we have four brand new products uh, set to come out when the factory gets open. So. And I will say the berry hot jelly is, it's awesome. <laughs> Over cream cheese with crackers. Oh, yeah. Hard Sounds to beat. good. Yeah. I think one of the first very hot jelly recipes you got, I actually came to the Endeavor Center and I brought them jelly filled donuts <laughs> That's with, with very hot jelly wow. uh, inside the donuts. Was that That's good? The truth. Oh, they were delicious. <laughs> it just sounds <laughs> weird having a hot donut. Oh, they with were glazed awesome. sugar. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was they great. Good. <laughs> it was great. When are you bringing them back? Uh, well, when you want them back for <laughs> breakfast, I think we'll go with that. <laughs> Okay, so your marketing was just word of mouth and talking. What's the next step? The next step, I think, for anybody, and, and this is one of the things that was really important to us, uh, was in branding your company. And we worked with a great company down in Augusta, Georgia, that gave us some advice. It helped us create a label. We wanted to look that uh, on our labels that said, we've been around for a while, even though we hadn't. Uh, and, and surprisingly, uh, Mike, this is been something that continues to come up. People say, oh, I've seen your stuff before in some city that we've never heard of, you know. So, hmm. uh, so I know that that branding is working for us. But you want to you want to come up with a brand for your company that uh, is recognizable. Um, if your thing is, is being a niche and uh, with something, something uh, that's unique and, and maybe a little crazy looking on the label, that's fine. But one of the biggest things that helped us was going to every little festival, um, every food event that we could go to and just get our sauces in front of people. Kind let, of a grassroots yeah, building thing. To, and just let, let them try it. You know, and, and one of the things that we, that we tell people, and again, as a multivocational pastor, 
Um, you know, I, I wear my faith on my sleeve. I, I don't apologize for that. I'm not bashful about that. But one of the things that we began telling people in the very beginning was that, you know, we had a mission statement that said we want to make every dining experience great. But underlying that was the fact that we really wanted to share the gospel of good taste with people. And, and when I say the gospel of good taste, what I mean by that is that, you know, I really believe that food is a gift that is given to us. And when you don't treat your food right, it's actually a sin. I really believe we need to learn how to cook great food, and we should do the very best we can with the gift that we've been given. So part of the gospel of good taste is learning how to make that food taste great. The second part of that is I truly believe that we've all been created to be in community with one another. Mm -hmm. we, we, we've been made, we've, we're social beings. We've been made to be in community with one another. And the, one of the best ways that i found to do that is to break bread around the table with people. If, you are, if you're having a great dining experience uh, with, with friends and family and you're sharing life, just think back of some of the memories that you've had in your life. Some of the fondest memories is probably around a dining room table someplace. And so part of the gospel of good taste for us was creating a line of products that allows people to make every dining experience great. So we went out, we began to, to market that, we began to brand that. We wanted, we wanted our company to be known for something. We didn't want to be just some run-of-the-mill thing. And so anyone that's getting started, I think, in the sauce business, and, and I want to talk more about that a little bit later, but anyone that's getting started in that, I think you want to get out there in front of people. Just, just get it in as many hands as you can. Begin to build uh, a grassroots campaign, if you will, about how great your particular product is. And get those folks to actually go to the grocery stores. A lot of our uh, grocery store chains that carry our stuff um, basically started because a client walked in and said, do you carry powder fam sauces? And next thing I know, my phone's ringing. Mm -hmm. And I got a grocery store manager saying, hey, we'd like to buy your stuff. So uh, get out there and brand it, market it, let everyone try it. Um, and give them ideas about what kind of foods to prepare with it because you got to kind of help people get their food imagination going a little bit. Right. And know who you are. Oh, absolutely. Like what you were saying, and this is, as I say, Holy Ghost Revival Sauce. Holy hot Ghost sauce. Revival. That's, ghost that's sauce. the hot one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you try it? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> I'll need a drink or something. <laughs> Uh, so we were talking over lunch and um, just came up in conversation that the uh, uh, the salsa industry you know, kind of runs on trends and uh, things continually change and new product development and things along those lines. Can you talk a little bit about that? And I know we've even worked together on Absolutely. some uh, some pork rubs mm -hmm. and some beef rubs and. There, I think I think there's a couple of things that's going on interesting in. Uh, I'm going to say the gourmet food sector, and we'll talk a little bit more detail how it relates to salsas, but uh, I think in a tight economy, people eat out less. Mm -hmm. And so they, they still want to have great food, and they still want to make the dining experience great. And so in an effort to do that, they're trying to cook uh, better meals at home. And Something so, with a little bit more yeah, zip and some memorability. Yeah, and if, if you don't have the money to go out and eat at a fancy restaurant, then make your kitchen a fancy restaurant. Right. And so how that's affected the condiment and hot sauce industry is there's been this, this trend for more and more what I call micro-batch hot sauces and condiment sauces. I know, and, I know the door on my fridge is half full of these <laughs> type of things. I have a couple doors yeah. full of mine. <laughs> um, but one of the things that, that I think is, is if, if you look back at the microbrewery industry and how micro beers uh, have kind of gone the last decade or so, and there's been such a great uh, groundswell of support in people going to that. The same thing is now happening with the sauce industry. And if, if you want evidence of that, just go out and look at any of your fast food chains and see how many of them are coming up with some kind of a habanero hamburger or ghost pepper taco or some other type of, of uh, fast food with these extreme uh, heat sauces in them. So I, I think the same thing is happening, and we've been able to ride that wave uh, coming on the end of, uh, beginning of this, where uh, as more and more people are craving spicy foods and great flavors and exotic flavors, mm -hmm. it's having that, that capability of creating that unique flavor that you can't get anywhere else. That was one of the reasons why we even started making sauces. I couldn't find what I liked anywhere else. Right. So I'll make my own. And that's what we did. Good. Good. So I know um, we've talked kind of about how you've got here, how the products were developed. Um, and now you're kind of on a new venture. Exactly. Uh, 
about a year and a half ago, our co-packer was bought out by another company. And one of the... What's a co-packer? A co-packer is a company that bottles uh, an approved product for store shelves. It, when uh, you're someone like myself who... Is that short, small runs? Uh, they, they could do short or large. Okay. Uh, and it's, it, it's anything from, um, you know, it could be a company as large as one of the major uh, ketchup manufacturers. They, they're packaging that food uh, sometimes for somebody else. Uh, they may have their own line, but then they're also bottling products for other people. Okay. And they put their label on it. And that's kind of what a co-packer does. Okay. Well, one of the things that we didn't realize getting early in the business was that most co-packers have very large minimum batch sizes. And that's very prohibitive to somebody who's new to the industry. It's very costly to launch your first run. You've got to get nutritional testing done. You have to have all this analysis done. You have to get labels designed. You've got to buy bottles and so on. It can be, it can cost as much as six to $10,000 for your very first run of sauce. Well, if you're a micro producer, that's out of your price range. You just can't do that. We were blessed that initially we were able to find a co-packer that would do 20 gallon and 40 gallon batches. Well, that allowed us to get started and that's why I had 15 different flavors. Mm -hmm. When we lost that co-packer, we came face to face with the reality that not everybody works that way. Mm -hmm. So after talking to some of our colleagues in the industry, we found that they were having the same challenge. We decided this was a good time for us to step our business up and expand it so that we could become a co-packer specializing in that micro batch market. That person who's brand new, maybe that person who's, uh, they're a barbecue sauce competitor and they make this great sauce that they use in competitions, but now people want to buy the sauce. Well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you get that out there? Or perhaps it's a restaurant that um, they, they want to have their own proprietary brand that they can put out to their consumers, whether that's a, a steak sauce, a, an exotic ketchup, or whatever. How do you get started doing that? Well, this company is going to allow people to do that. I just received a phone call from a barbecue sauce competitor just yesterday uh, wanting to expand his business and start marketing his sauces. He needs a place to do that. Mm -hmm. And he needs a place that can do it in small batches, 20 gallons, 40 gallons at a time, so that he can see if there's a market and a demand for his product. Good. The, um, we talk, talk, in talking about co-packing, and what's a little bit of the process that you would have involved in your facility uh, as far as the, uh, I guess, walk us through how the would fresh product pro comes <laughs> in. Would they come with the uh, nutritional information? No, already? that's one of the things that we do. Our okay. company is going to be a, uh, a full-service co-packing facility. We'll handle everything from uh, helping you do the branding and the marketing we talked about earlier uh, all the way through producing it. But if a person was interested in bottling our facility, the first thing I would sit down and do with them is I'd sit down for about an hour, listen to their story, listen to how they got started. We talk about what kind of product they're trying to make. And then we would actually cook a batch on the stove just to kind of see how it works. And then we'd walk them through the process. How do you get started? How do you, we would do the nutritional analysis for them. We'll send it off and get the lab testing done. We'll do the uh, Ohio Department of Agriculture and FDA uh, processing documentation that has to be done. We'll take care of getting them through all of those hoops that can be very, very intimidating to a brand new startup company. So we're going to be able to help them do that. Now our company is going to be set up so that they can come in and we can process, do all those types of things. We can produce the product, put it in bottles, and even ship it for them. So we can even do that. We have partnerships with some logistics companies that help us uh, get the product out and get it into the stores or just ship it back to them. So there's a lot of great things happening in, uh, in our factory. Once we get this open, and we're about a month out from being officially all the way open. Uh, but once we get, get everything open and running, uh, we're going to be able to produce somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, 1,200 to 1,500 cases a day of sauce, uh, which is, that's, that's great. We're going to be creating some new jobs for our community. We're very excited about that. But we're also helping to create uh, ancillary jobs. Um, again, these new sauce manufacturers. It's an outlet also for farmers to come. We want to buy the freshest regional produce for the products that we can. So it's an outlet for them. Again, it's an outlet for restaurants to expand their business and what they do. So there's really a lot of impacts to the local business because of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Now I understand there's another section of your business besides the sauces and besides the co-packing part of it. Uh, in order to teach people what to do with your products, you have a school. 
yeah, we, uh, as part of the factory, we created a kitchen lab to develop new flavors. Well, when that kitchen lab's not being used for that, we've created the Pastor's Pantry Cooking School. And we were inspired by this with a trip to New Orleans where we went to New Orleans Cooking School. And, and basically, it's a demonstration cooking class where people can come, they can uh, experience a, a, a four-course uh, gourmet meal. I'm going to show them and teach them how to cook it. It's sort of like the Food Network uh, live. Right. Uh, you get all the smell. That's a, that's a great picture of me uh, actually in but the lab. it shows the kitchen. It shows yeah. the kitchen. That's me cooking. In fact, that was just about a week or so ago. And uh, just a, a, a great shot of just uh, how we prepare our foods in front of people. We want to be able to, we want to make sure that they can go home and cook the same kind of meals. And again, have that social experience of dining together mm -hmm. at home. So that's part of what uh, the Patter Fam's uh, or Pastor's Pantry Cooking School is all about. Okay, so when would you have the schools? Maybe how much does it cost sure. and what's the location? Um, the location is uh, in Wheelersburg, but the best way to find all that out is go to our website, uh, patterfamsauces.com. But uh, the, basically our classes vary. It depends on my uh, work schedule, our bottling schedule. We usually do a couple of classes every two weeks and they're usually in the evenings from seven to nine o'clock. We can hold anywhere from eight to 20 people. We even do private events. We've had some folks come in, we had an all ladies night. We had a great uh, Sunday school class came in and wanted to just bring their Sunday school class in there to do that. But uh, you come in, it's about two hours of just fine dining, some of the best food that you'll eat in the tri-state area. And uh, they get to learn a lot and hopefully go home with some great recipes. No, on the well, bottom of the screen, of the, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to explain the bottom of the screen. Uh, there's your website, and then below that is the Facebook. Yeah, so we have a couple things. Put in yes. Facebook, then a dot com slash, and then you put Patterfam sauces, and, and then that's we also one have, of them. Yep, and we also have a Pastor's Pantry Cooking School. Facebook so you add that to the Facebook, Facebook. right? That's the name of That's the same, profile. Yep, yeah. yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, our website has all of the uh, uh, menus and the dates. And basically, you go on go online. You pick a, a great recipe. Like tomorrow night, we're doing tailgaters with football season. I'm doing all tailgate food tomorrow night. But you go online. Um, you find a class that you want to learn about. You put it in your shopping cart. You check out, which makes your reservation. And the classes will run anywhere from twenty to thirty-five dollars, depending on you know what I'm cooking and what the meal is all about. But um, again, we also do private events. We had a, um, a couple of different teen classes hmm. where some teenage, we just did it just for teens. Uh, we had a lot of parents want to know, hey, can you teach my kid how to cook? Yep, we'd love to do that. So <laughs> I think maybe they're trying to get out of that. Make but, some uh, new customers. That's it. That's, that's it. That's how you learned. And we teach, we teach them how to use the sauces, but we teach them just some basic fundamental skills uh, of, of how to function in the kitchen. So many people really just struggle with that. Okay, just an easy one. What do you do with a sauce? Okay, this is barbecue sauce. That's do my you, sweet barbecue sauce. Do you uh, put it on as it's cooking? Do you use it more at the end of the cook or just for dipping? Or? There's actually two different kinds, in, if I can break it into two different genres for you. Okay. There's a mopping sauce and then there's a finished sauce. Okay. Mopping sauces are meant to, to baste while you're cooking. Uh, typically, you don't want to start that right away, but maybe the last 20 to 30 minutes of something that you're cooking on the grill or a smoker, you want to base it maybe every 5 or 10 minutes, particularly when it's a barbecue sauce, because you want the sugars that are in there to caramelize and get gooey. Okay, So it's going to thicken while it's cooking on the meat. Now, That's would you put a rub on it before you use it? I always bit? recommend a rub. Okay. I, I, and, and we have a lot of rubs as well. I wasn't sure if that well. would complicate At, what yeah, your no, favorites I, are. I, I would always recommend a rub. It helps actually seal in the juices with that. Um, but then now the finished sauce is meant to go on right at the end. Okay. It's already thick. Uh, it's already sweet. All you want to do is basically use that as a dipping sauce or to baste right as you're taking the meat off the grill. Okay. So that's really a couple different kinds. But a uh, barbecue sauce like that, um, I'll give you a, a 30 second best baked beans you'll ever make in your life. You take two cans of pork and beans, rinse all the junk off of them in a colander, put them in a cast iron skillet, add one bottle of Patterfam sweet barbecue sauce. Put three strips of bacon across the top. When the bacon's crispy, it's done. That's all you have to put in it. Everything you need and then some is already in the sauce. So how would you know the difference between a basting and a finished sauce? Uh, usually it's the thickness. A, a, a basting sauce or a mopping sauce is going to be very thin. Mm -hmm. It's meant to baste and thicken as it cooks. And a finished sauce is going to come thick out of the bottle. A lot like a ketchup or, again, some of the barbecue sauces where you almost have to squeeze them to get them out. That's a finished sauce. Right. Would that have more vinegar for... 
breaking down the meat. No, well, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's really um, just about how thick they made the sauce. Sometimes they've actually added a thickener mm -hmm. to it to make it a finished sauce. They typically are already extremely sweet um, if they're a finished sauce because they're not meant to get sweeter and condense or get thick on the meat. Uh, but the vinegar content usually is about the same. Okay. So you might have to get this question in sure. before, I know we're running short on time, but the, um, is there any advice you could give to uh, people that are starting out on how to get your product in front of the market? I mean, you're in several different sure. stores. Yeah. As, you know, we're in Celebrate Local and Easton, right. uh, Whole Foods, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple other. Jungle Gems. Jungle Gems. Yeah. yeah. What, is there any advice that you could give people starting out how to market their product and get into those larger markets? Oh, absolutely. Well, first thing I do is call me. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, um, we actually did a lot of legwork. We went around to some of the, we started out with some of the local grocery stores and uh, just went in and got the store manager just to try our sauces. We just took, a, took samples in and said, try this. We tried to get local customers to go in and request our sauces, and that really helped us tremendously. But you, you've got to start someplace, and it always starts, again, with branding your company. Uh, know your story. Be able to tell it, and tell it passionately. But get it in front of the people that make those kinds of decisions. There's a lot of food shows out there, things like that as well, where a lot of uh, buyers come that's a hit and miss proposition. You're always better face to face if you can do it. Sure, good. And I think uh, just the way you are is another good example of what a business person needs to be: is passionate. passionate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not passionate. I'm nothing. I'm, you know, <laughs> no, you have the enthusiasm, the uh, the passion, and and the drive to make it work. Sure, absolutely. Well, I don't think anybody can tell your story about your company better than you can. So if you get the opportunity, and someone gave me that advice early on, it was one of those smartest things, dumbest things. Someone gave me that advice. They said, you always should be the one who promotes your company. Mm -hmm. And yep. so uh, we try to do that. Yep. Well, Sam, I know we're, again, we're getting short on time. We could sit here and talk about this all day. I know you could. Let's cook. Uh, let's cook. Us. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about it on the way yes, home, I guess. Sure. <laughs> But we really do appreciate you. you coming on. It's been a blessing. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. And um, again, Powder Fam Sauces, please go to their website. Uh, it's really some great products. Um, and then in a month or so, the factory should be up and running. And um, we wish you all the best. In We're that. excited. So. Come see us. Come eat with us. Okay. That sounds like a good deal. And do you give tours? I do give tours. Just okay. call first. Oh, all right. And we almost <laughs> forgot. Oh, yeah. I've got several cookbooks as well. Uh, this is my latest uh, fireside cookbook. It's got about 45 uh, great outdoor recipes for the, for the hunter and the fisherman out there. Good. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks, and Mike. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thanks to you guys for watching, and we'll see you next month on Strictly Business.